Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Today we're going to be talking about rubs, and I got my buddy Shane and Lawson Lynn from Townsend Supply and Spices, and they're going to show you how to make a rub. Now, I know there's a bunch of great rubs out on the market. Y'all see me use mine in the videos, but it's important you know that you can start with some basic ingredients you got at home and put together one, and that's what Shane and Lawson are going to show us today. Guys, y'all ready? We're ready. So guys, I see y'all brought some seasonings with you today, and this is what y'all do for a living. Y'all make rubs, co-pack them, spices, seasons. It's your life, right? You bet. So what all what all did you got here, and what are we going to do in this rub? Well, we're just going to show you today. I mean, it's easy to make your own barbecue rub at home, a lot easier than people think it is. And you can take your own twist to it, however you want to do it. You can go any direction you want to go. Like, we've got 10 of our basic ingredients. We've got paprika, cumin, chili powder, garlic, black pepper, onion, mustard, sugar, cayenne, and salt. So that's just basic stuff that you got at home. It's yeah. nothing special, it's, right? Everybody's got pretty well you this can get in their cabinet. Store, yeah. Sam's Club. Quality is important to us, of course. We try to use the best quality. But I've already mixed this one up. Just kind of give you a little look what it's supposed to look like. Can I try it? You bet. Give it a try. <laughs> so what are you looking for when you make a basic barbecue rub? There's some notes that I want them to hit. You know, what, what are you guys seeing? The basic barbecue rub, we think chili powder, cumin, paprika, that's Salt good. and sugar, of course. And we like a little cayenne for some back heat. I definitely get the cumin. The balance of the salt and the sugar is right on it. And it's got, you know, it's got a good color. I like that, man. And it's super it's simple. Heat, yeah. yeah, super simple to make. I mean, you can make this with your own ingredients like you have in your house. So we got paprika going in. We got in. paprika, cumin, chili powder. That's garlic there. That's sugar. Garlic onion's always critical to me. Yeah. Love it. Got to have the garlic and the onion. Got to have it. We That's love that garlic. savory note. That cayenne. Kinda, this one right here is one of those, not many people put it in a rub, but it's one of those, if you put it in there, it's hard to identify. It what? kind of puts you to the next level. Dry mustard. Dry Most mustard. Most people don't think about it, but it gives you a really crisp yeah. taste in there. Dry um, mustard. Okay. Really nice, yeah. So if you're making this at home, you know, this is like, what would you say, like a rub, rib rub or chicken rub yeah. or, or pork This is just rub. a good, good, good general purpose barbecue yeah. season. You could take it. What I like about knowing how to make one like this is you can go any direction you want. You can. If you want more of a beef rub, take the sugar out. Add more black pepper. Yeah, definitely. If you want it, you know, if you want it more like a, a sweet, sweeter rub, just double up on the sugar. Maybe yeah. add some granulated yeah, add some sugar. Add some brown sugar. You know, and a lot of people now are using uh, granulated honey. Honey's really? a big deal, a big flavor right now. And we've actually got a company that supplies a really good granulated honey. We used to make awesome. one that we used honey powder. And it was a really, it was really good rib rub that Waylon used to make. But we all we started with the base recipe. You know, that's they all had that foundation, same kind of ingredients you're using there. Let's give it a try there. See what's thinking about that. Super close. You know, same Somebody thing with hot wing. You want to do a hot wing? You add a little more cayenne to that. Make it. You can make it your own. You, there are just so many directions you can yeah. go with that. I love the smokiness that cumin gives it. And that's what makes it taste like barbecue to me. Yeah. You get the pepper, you get the heat from the cayenne, you get the smokiness from the cumin. Salt it. and pepper, the onion and the garlic and the sugar just kind of balance out. They do. Let's talk ratios. What's a good ratio to start with? Are you trying to keep some things equal? We like to keep garlic and onion equal. This one's actually got just a little more garlic. I mean, garlic and onion work really well together. This one has equal parts, salt and sugar. Equal parts, equal salt, part, sugar. salt, and sugar. Most barbecue rubs that you run into nowadays will have about twice as much salt as it does sugar. Uh, but this one right here, I mean, it's super easy. Cooks out really well. I mean, the sugar just works, in my opinion, salt and sugar together. The same amount. Works so where phenomenal. are you getting the color from in this one? Is it just the, pep the yeah, paprika? Yeah, it'll be the paprika, the chili, the chili powder, of course, is dark, and the cumin's dark. It's not as dark as this one. But this one has been in a bag since yesterday, and the paprika kind of releases a little oil and gets everything. So it color. changes over time. Yeah, well, it'll, that, it'll get darker red. That's exactly what I wanted to talk to you. Now that you make the rub, if you're not going to use it all, I mean, it's ready to go right now. You can make it up. It'll be great. What, what's the shelf like on it? What's a good way to store it? I mean, if you put it in a, something that's airtight, like this here, this is a mason jar, and this is the actual recipe that we made here. So it makes just over a pound, pound and a third pound, something like that. But that'll be good six months if you keep no it out. problem yeah keep it out of the light keep it airtight you can keep it in a ziploc bag That's a ziploc container this mason jars work really well because it's a sure seal i normally just throw it i've always got bits of rubs and stuff so i'm working with and yeah. different ziploc bags forget what's in them but yeah but Not i like them because them. you can squeeze all the air out you can roll it down get the air out 
and your rub stays fresher longer. Another thing we talk about color, you know, that's a big thing on my rub. When I first started making it, I was like wanting to, you know, make something that made a real pretty product because we were being judged on it. Mm -hmm. And so I started playing with using different kinds of paprika. You can even do that in your own if you want yeah. some unique flavors. You know, this this is just like a standard Spanish paprika. Yeah, that's just regular. It's a, actually it's a 120 ASTA is this, is what the redness is on this level. What you buy in the grocery store normally, you can yeah. get 85, which will get kind of give it a little more orange. Yeah, yeah. But 120 is typical. For me, I mean, you don't get a ton of flavor from paprika. It can get a little earthy on you, but it, it has a little touch of heat to it, but it's mainly color. And that's know? that's something else I've noticed. Paprika, if you can put too much paprika, because it'll get pasty. Yeah. I mean, when you cook it, the smoke adheres to the paprika better than it does anything. Smoke just absolutely jumps to the paprika, gives it that real rich mahogany look when whatever you're cooking. So if you had to pick a few of these ingredients, that's the, what, what's your favorite, what's the best ones in there, if that's all you got? Oh, I'm gonna use garlic, onion, salt, sugar, black pepper. That's it, basic. Yeah. It's like an AP style yeah, rub. Just AP. That's what I was gonna say. I could use. You give me salt and pepper and garlic. I can do a lot of the magic with it. You can take salt, pepper, garlic, and onion, and do about anything with it. Yeah. And I, I love the chili powder based barbecue rubs. Well, that gives it the authentic barbecue yeah. flavor. I mean, yeah. when you smell this, it smells like barbecue. You bet. So guys, that's a great basic rub. I mean, you could take this. Go to back cooking barbecue today with it. If you were going to use it as a jumping off point to like tweak it, if somebody wants to, to kind of make it their own or put their own spin in it, what's some ideas? If you're cooking ribs and you like that sweet, that honey taste, you know, and you want to add a little more granulated brown or just brown, if you got regular brown sugar in the cabinet, throw, throw a quarter cup of that in here with it and see what you get. Exper you know, it's all, it, like you say, it's real forgiving. You want to do hot wings, pull that pepper up a little bit, you know. But this will get anybody down the road a good ways. And they've got most of these things in their cabinet. You don't have to run out to the store to pick these up. If you do, you can pick them up anywhere local. So. Well, guys, thank you all for coming out today. Everybody try this rub recipe. It's a great basic rub. I mean, it's something that you can throw together, like Shane said. Uh, I think you'll like it and tweak it. Hey, let me know how it turns out. Appreciate y'all checking us out here at How to Barbecue Right. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to our channel. You know you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We got the podcast going once a week. Guys, y'all want to go do the podcast? Maybe yeah. we can sit down and, and chat a little more about rubs and co-packing and stuff. Might as well. We'll get that up next week. We'll see y'all next time.